Buenos Dias Gunners Collective. Back at it, y'all already motherfucking know. Bing, ba, bang, like a smack addict, right? And as you can tell by that thumbnail right there, oh yes, there will be song in it. We're going to talk about the City Vida Xaviers and the Famero 14ers. Yes, indubitably, a little bit of red on red. A little bit, right? We're going to talk about it, man. I'm going to give you guys the intricacies and the rundown into how the wiggleization was really happening in the 90s, incarcerated as a youth, right? I've done some time. About two or three. Or I live. Word of the state, man. Shout out to Ascari X. That motherfucker was doing it back then. I used to slap him every day. So, Trip, um, you know, of course, everybody knows my story. I went down south. Fred C. Nellis, Whittier Boulevard, Vato, you know what I mean? But I wasn't cruising that fucking boulevard. I was going down a rocky road. So I to watch out, damn, right? I'm activating a function. And I was holding it 10 toes down for the homeboys and for my group segment, my faction, my collective, what I believed in. And I was pushing forth for the Northenia movement. Okay? And I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, follow the yellow big crowd. Follow the yellow. We represent the lolly pack. It wasn't all that, bro. Oh, it wasn't all that, man. It was a rough road. It was a hard game, yet we operated. We did what we had to do to maintain for our gente and for ours, right? And uh, in life, as a grown man, as a man in general, you only have a few things. Uh, well, I know. Word in your balls. Charlie, man. Balls and respect, vato. Right? Give, put a little respect on my name. You know, get some of that. Um, and have respect for others. Just like you want that respect. And everything will work out. Just Everything's going to be just fine. Orale, Billy Bob. But Trip, so now... Being down south, all the homeboys stuck together. You know, we were far and few between, man. They would, like I said, there would be a busload of 10, 15 homeboys roll up, and four, four or five of them would hang on, the, like in vogue. The rest would be, you know, what I mean, fell off like Tony, Tony, Tony. Whatever you want, you know, the Swedenjus had it. They had that shit on lock. Um, but I myself wasn't going out like that, Charlie, man. That wasn't mm -mm, no, no way, no fucking how. That wasn't in my makeup or my DNA, and still ain't to this day, man. I've always been lightweight against the grain. I'm gonna do what I do for what I believe in, right? And so I rolled with the homeboys like that, period, because that's that was my love and my passion was for the North, they're plain and simple, period. Now, in a menudo style, in a direct fashion, they shipped your boy back up north there. When I went up north, I went to Preston, and the wiggleization was very real with the perros, with the bulldogs from Fresno, right? Reason being, the bulldogs had just fell off, I'd say, four to five months prior, um, and it was on. It was on, yeah, it was on, G, right? It was cracking with the Bulldogs. Not necessarily with the Southsiders. The Surrenders were kind of doing their own program. You know, if something popped off, they were quick to rise to the occasion, Sasuke, and in that fashion. But really, it was really on between the Norteños and the Dogs. We were all trying to figure it out as youngsters what the fuck was really going down. And Sasuke, we weren't going out like that. You're our enemiga. It's, it's fucking Master Blaster time. Orale, Master Blaster. And that's what it was, you know, in a motherfucking Mad Max style. So, Trip. Thunderdome was cracking. It was popping in Preston. Vatos were getting thrown through fucking windows. Vatos were getting beat up. Uh, I seen shit go down in the fucking horticulture class. That was a trade there. You used to go to school, and that was one of the trade things. You used to always crack right there, man. There was a lot of blinas. Preston had a lot of blinas, a lot of places to make a crack. And quietly as it's kept, homeboys and dogs alike would just get off right there fucking on the way to Chow, on the way to fucking the infirmary, visiting. It. Sorry, Hefa. Hey, come back next week. You know what I mean? Vatos had to handle their business, and that's just what it was. So the Norteños, again, were sticking together. I never seen or even heard of what I was going to see when I got to Holtim, Carl Holton. So now let me tell a little bit of story about me rolling up to Carl Holton, man. It's a little sidetrack story, but it's a war story. And I've told it before, man, but I'm going to say it again. So I get on that little van, and it's me, one Africano, and a Vato that I recognize. You know, I'm like, damn, where did I know this Vato from? Was he in Nellis? So I was like, is he the boogeyman? No, I wasn't the Vato under, wasn't the Vato under people under the stairs. He, uh, he stopped there like that Vato was. Who is this guy, right? So I okay. And uh, turns out, I know that I know the guy. You know, he was a homeboy from way back in the days when I was real little. You know, seven, eight, nine years old. And uh, he's from my city, from Merced, man. I know his sisters, Hefita, everybody, his whole familia. This is one of the homies. So we start chopping it up, man. He recognizes me. We're, we're kicking back. We're in the back. We're shackled up, and we're chopping game. We're talking about Merced. We're talking about tacos. We're talking about uh, taco. We're doing our thing. And, um... Quietly as his kept, right before we get to Carl Holton, I'm like, yeah, what, what compa were you on? He was like, yeah, I was on Greenbrier. I said, well, who was over there with you? I said, I know the homeboy Weasel was over here. The homeboy Los Santos was over there. And the homeboy Fernie Lucky was over here. And I know where I was. I was in the rack, homie, doing my thing. He was like, 
nah, man, I, I'm from A-Town, Sewood. And I was like, what? Right now, at that time, the set tripping was real, especially us from Merced County. Our enemy guys at the time were the upstate Sewoodians were from Atwater. So anyone that was from Atwater, I thought, I'm just going to keep it real, man. We felt like it was on site at all times. And they felt the same way. And so he's like, what? And he starts woofing. I'm like, let me start to mm -hmm. I got nothing more to say to this individual. Let me come off these handcuffs, man. And the wiggleization is going to get very real, man. Nudo motherfucking everywhere, right? Orale, patas de puerco. And, uh, of course, shackles come off. You know, I lightweight wait for him to get his shit one shackle off. So, I, you know, I don't feel it's not a PC move, but I'm about to crack this motherfucker. As soon as one hand, saw tiger, right? I hit that motherfucker with the one time uppercut for his mind. And uh, so I said, Sonic, boom. You know, he was he was out for the count. He was down. I was on him. Um, of course, the placas pull me off of him. They take me to the oil, Yuba Hall. And you got to understand, this is a new uh, institution that I'm rolling up to, a new yard of that. So I don't really know who's who and what's what and how the get down is here. But at this point, I don't give a fuck. I'm handling my business wherever I go. And that's just what it's going to be. And so they put me in the oil and a homeboy named Muggsy is a porter. And he comes and gets at me. He's from Sanjo and a whole body horseshoe. And he pulls up and he's like, hey, bro, where are you from? I said, Merced, dead end. You know what I mean? You already know what it is. And he was like, oh, you're the homeboy. Yeah, you was, you're skinner, homies. You was down in Nellis. I said, yeah, you heard about me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up, bro. We'll trip out. The homeboy Cornejo from A Street, he just told us. He came up. He wiggled through here, homie. He gave us the whole details who was all doing their thing down there. He said, yeah, man, it was my homeboy whoop de whoop there and, my, and uh, the homeboy fucking wet on and, and all this, right? Anyways, things that we would know. And so we're chopping game. And uh, he's like, yeah, they're probably going to move you. And sure enough, man, I get my level A. Right, there was level A's and level B's, which are your equivalent to 115 write-ups, right? I get my level A, which means I really fucked this dude up, uh, kind of like an assault. And they moved me to Mono Hall. And I get to, uh, actually, yeah, they moved me to Mono. And um, they were going to move me to Donner, which was the reception. But they said, fuck that. This guy's seasoned in the game. So I was gay, like salt and pepper. Or they put him on Mono. So they shot me to Mono. And when I got there, things were different. There was the homeboy Bad Boy from Sakura, who I recognized from Nellis, and a couple other homeboys. So it was all good on that front. But at the same time... Um, it was an ugly situation concerning what was going on. There was like different ramflas of homeboys. You got to understand, homeboys were very thick there at this time. And now I'm coming from motherfucking where I'm not used to Norteños being thick at all. And Preston, we lightweight, we're, we're doing it, but it was about even Steven, you know? Um, but here, there was 40 or 50 of us to a compa. We were fucking in abundance. The numbers were numerous, is what they'll say, right? And, um... So I quickly got in with all the hit, man, and I and I kicked with everybody, you know, about from San Jose, San Fran, Oakland, Tulare County, stand up, I'm Sacra, Stockton, Merced, and we were doing our thing, molesto, and it was all lovely on that part. But what I started to see is homeboys from San Jose, Oakland, Frisco, these bigger cities with XIV on their neck, XIV on their chest. I was like, fuck the world, at the XIV right here on their eyelids. And I'd see Vatos from Tula County, as well as Vatos that were from like Lince, Dinuba, uh, I guess that is Tulare County, Fresno County, Merced, these smaller cities with Famero, Welga Birds, Famero, 14 are on them. And I hit the homeboy up, homeboy Bubba from Song. I think it was Bubba. So I was like, damn, homies, what's up with this shit, bro? XIV. And he was like, and he had an XIV on his forehead. And he was like, yeah, bro, it's City Vida and Famero, two different group factions of homeboys. He said, now, if push comes to shove and it gets to cracking, it gets to a menudo style around this motherfucker, and the sureños or the perros want it, of course, man, we're all going to unite for one and push it, right? He goes, but at the same time, man, you know, it's that city life, bro. And me, always having uh, close ties with homeboys from Fresno, as well as Sanjo, I was, so it's good. I'm in the middle, right? So I can kind of choose up with whoever I want to go kick it with. And at the same time, I don't give a fuck. If anyone comes at me with any sideways, bro, homeboy or not, the red on red is going to get fucking real. It's going about to make purple around this motherfucker. You feel me? So we're chilling and uh, and they're really playing it, bro. I actually seen homeboys go into the Blinas to go heads up over some City Vida Fa Metal beef. Over a, and what it was, and I'm going to quietly as this kid, man, I know the homeboys from Sanjo are going to be like, you... We thought you were cool, gun, right? But I'm going to keep it real, man. The Vatos from San Juan were playing that game. They were playing that, hey, we're bigger, we're better, we're a bigger city. We're from city life. You guys are slower, right? They were oppressing the Fameros. They were oppressing the, the country boys. So that's it, You know what I mean? Don't don't try to oppress the country boys, right? Because we'll show you how motherfuckers get down in the tractor. You throw the whole my sod busters. And in that fashion, 114%, right? So um, that's what was going on. The push was real to kind of... Like, hey, we're more superior. Your homies better your little homies. We're the bigger homies because we're from the city, the bigger cities, right? Which was the same thing, if you look at it, back in the days happened with the MA 
and the farmeros. You know, just a bunch of lame farmers from the north. It's kind of how it went, right? And so I was seeing that play itself out again, only amongst the homeboys. And uh, nah, bro, I wasn't with that. But I ain't gonna lie, man, quietly as it's kept, it just kept on going on, man. I kept seeing it and I more gravitated towards the city via XIVers. For no other reason than a lot of my homeboys were from the bigger cities. Man, I wasn't playing that shit. I already knew what it was with me. It was North to playing a simple period, whether it's a 14, an X4, or a XIV. It didn't matter to me. So I was scared. If you had a wet guy bird or you had a 14 on you, so I was scared. Watch out. I'm right here. You know what I mean? The embracement was real. And uh, anyone that wasn't with the program, you know, I believe I can fly. Oh, that lid. You're fucking flying off the tier because we're not playing. We weren't playing. We were youngsters, but we were about our business. And in fact, we were even a little bit more treacherous than prison because we were trying to prove ourselves, earn stripes and do pegadas and whatever the kid. So I, was, I, I, I got it, right? Everybody wanted to be the one. You know, you wanted to be the man. The proving yourself was really real. The wiggleization was so real. Now, um, I tripped because I had never seen this. So when Homeboy started to run me down about the XIV years and the, and the 14 years, I was like, who made this shit up, bro? And quite as it's kept, I can't sit here and fucking tell you at the end of the day who made that up. It probably came one day, some vato was drawing, some fuck stuff, hey, it's the I'm drawing, right? And uh, didn't know how to draw, got all frustrated and said, fuck that, it's XIV on mine. I ain't no 14 or right? And I, I can't sit here and tell you, but I know that that movement was being pushed. And a lot of the younger homeboys that I talk to, man, they'll sit there and they'll be like, Charlie Gun, man, you, that's not, it never happened. Let's get, oh, what do you think? Motherfucker, Bigfoot ain't real either? Well, he ain't. Well, I don't know. So, okay, watch out. You know what I mean? What, negros don't got big peepas? <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, look, fact remains, homes, it is what it is. You know what I mean? You got to understand that this is what happened. This is what took place. It was a lightweight red on red. Uh, split group faction split it didn't last very long man i'd say a year or two and then of course uh other homeboys came along and we kind of just like let that shit go and stopped pushing on that more perros were coming man and the push was really against fresno but it kind of looked like it it started from the splintering effect of fresno and sanjo like i said in a spiel i did that fresno and sanjo were always at odds being two of the biggest group the cars within the faction within the collective there was always some type of animosity or beef, right? Now, what happened on the city, I don't know. Fresno and Sanjo are far from each other. One's in the fucking bay and the other one's in the valley, man. So it really doesn't matter. But in inside prison, man, inside CYA, there was always a little animosity there. And still to this day, man, Vatos feel superior to one another. Now, trip. Uh, the XIVers were fucking righteous. Some good-ass, well-educated, laced homeboys. And the Fameros, the 14ers, likewise, bro. There was no difference. The only difference was demographics, you know, and, and me as being down south home and going through that struggle, that plight, that turmoil, man, everything that I went went through, I seen this as fucking frivolous. I seen this as fucking traitorous and treachery, right? And the reason I seen it was because, bro, we need every sold out that we got. We're up short. You know, most of these motherfuckers, they had came straight from NRCC, hella deep to right here, Carl Alton, hella deeper, right? So it was off. Hey, all right. These motherfuckers were really feeling themselves. They were really wiggling. And at the end of the day, I had just come from the trenches, homes, where motherfuckers had to dig themselves out the soil. You know, you had to toil in that soil one time for what you ate. And now I'm coming up north where it should be all lavish and everyone kicking it. And you got homeboys fighting amongst each other over nothing more than a fucking 14 and XIV, which is the same exact number, Bob Ossos, right? But I participated. I participated in the fact that for a while I was running with the city of Vida. Even at one point I was like, yeah, you know, we had a junta and Vatos were like standing the ground. The Fameros were about it, bro. The Fameros were like, fuck it, Holmes. La primera lives, Vato, right? Especially the Vatos from Tulare County. They're ready to get down at any point in time. Them Vatos are fucking cholos in every fashion. You can't take nothing from Tula County, man. Tula County, stand up, man. Portals, Vaisa, Lince, Dainuba, Exeter, fucking, and every other city in between I didn't mention, man. Tula, you know what I mean? Vatos will handle their shit. TC. Um, but Sanjo and, and San Fran and Oakland being the bigger cities, they were deeper, especially San Jose. And they always try to press up. And Vatos fought back. So it, was, it wasn't to the point of motherfuckers ever dying or anyone got hit or sliced or whacked, nothing like that, but there were some one-on-ones, there was a little bit of aggression, you've seen a lot of tagging City Vida XIVers, a lot of Fameto 14ers, 
And uh, Vatos were saying if you had the X4 tattooed on you, you had to get it taken off because there was no such thing as X4. There was just a lot of kid games being played. Nothing that was being dictated from the penitentiary, from the California, California Department of Corrections. Nada. They probably they would have probably been like, shut the fuck up, right? Strap yourself. Get over here. The infighting was real, though. You know, so what happened? It's a lost part of the historia of the Norteños that a lot of people don't know about. And it played out in the 90s, early to mid 90s, right? So now look, I myself wasn't really with it and I was pushing against it. I was kicking it with the city of Vida more just because they were the homeboys. But at the same time, man, if they would have pushed up on the Fametos in a real fashion, I would have tried to, sh man, we shutting all this shit down, right? I wouldn't let none of that happen. So, and I expressed that to the homeboys because I had a homeboy from Merced that was actually claiming Fametto 14. He's like, hey, gun, you always kick it with them. Homes, I thought you you're a Fametto at heart. And I said, homie, I'm a Northanio at heart. You know, I ain't with the I'm from Edo City, like that. I'm from the town, homie. Burr, West Side. That's where I'm from, bro. So you know, at the end of the day, that's what I will go for. But I'm a Northenian first and foremost, so I got everybody's bag, and I I hope everyone got mine. And for those of you that feel that this fucking little movement that you guys are pushing is above all that, well, then we're gonna find out when the cream rises to the top at the end. That's get. I know my shit sharpened. So I wasn't tripping, right? But this is how it was going down. I ain't the fucking hardest motherfucker. I ain't da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. I'm not Jaws, homie. I was a skinny, sucked up, fucking pimply faced, fucking YA baby. But I'll tell you right now, where I came from and things that I seen and been through, none of these vatos could. So I get time my shoe, the Hurry up, right? Vatos couldn't lace my boots. You know, I didn't. I didn't been some places. You know, I done been through the trenches. I didn't seen motherfuckers get whacked. I seen motherfuckers get their whole shit. So let's get it. All. Hey, the black is like what? Look. And their fucking face falls off, right? I've seen it. You know, I've participated in things, activities. You know, I got scars on my body where I was hit myself. So coming from that and then coming to this frivolous antics, this is what happens when group factions and group segments, especially North Indians, become deep. We start fucking turning on our own. Cannibalism. What the? Sasuke? Hey, watch out. He's from Exeter. Eat him, right? This is how it is. Like a whole bunch of fucking zombies with nothing to do but fucking turn to infighting when the federals, meanwhile, the sweat are kicking back like neighborhood music, kicking back neighborhood music. They're chilling, doing their thing, you know, and I'm not promoting the fucking gang activity and I'm not promoting, I'm promoting unity of the raza, but at the same time, I'm telling you uh, about some of the history that happened within the Norteño Collective, period. Plain and simple in the 90s, it was going down like that. And uh, I had a youngster, he asked me, he's like, damn, bro, fucking, uh, uh, I never heard about that. And I said, you know, look into your history, bro. Look into some of the homeboys that were around in them, in them times. And they'll tell you, you know, they'll tell you it was something that was really righteously going on. Especially, it always seems like Sanjo was mainly involved. And fucking what the fuck? Orale sharks. You what those are involved in all the bullshit, right? Just what it is. You know, nothing but love for Sanjo. I'm just saying at the end of the day, that's how they wiggle. Um, the homeboys from Salas were a different level. They were fameros, pero they kicked it with Sanjo también. No one pretty much fucked with Salas. They were like me. They could do whatever the fuck they want because they're from Salas. And that was headquarters. And motherfuckers knew better, right? And every homeboy that from Salas weren't even tripping, bro, like that. And I kicked it with a lot of homeboys from Salinas también. Shout out to Garfield and the real ones that were there. Shorty from Casitas. You already know. And um, so I remember when all that shit fizzled out. when Bulldog started to get a little bit deeper. And uh, I'll tell you a story about that, man. So... Uh, the homeboy Smiley, and it plays a big part into it. And I've told the story, man. It was one of my classics. The homeboy Big Smiles is there, and he's from F14 Bulldogs, right? He's a Fresno 14er, still in Northanio, still wiggling. And um, he's doing his thing, man. I remember me and him, man. We used to walk to school together every day. He was a big old boy, right? Hair slicked back. He thought he was the shit. And, uh, but he was real nice, bro. One of the smoothest characters, smoothest homeboys. I was happy to have him on my team, have him on my, our side, you know? He was a big boy. He was like Snuffleupagus, do, 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 but he had hands. And uh, he wasn't playing the bulldog stuff. He used to be like, nah, I'll never be a dog. I mean, I'll never let the North to go. I'm always going to let these motherfucking uh, well got bird wings fly. And whatever the case may be, and I was like, cool. Um, very respectful individual. And then this bulldog gets there. He's a big guy, man. I think they called him Shy Boy or something like that. I mean, he was from, uh, I forget, he was from Fresno County. But anyways, the Volta gets there. Length is on. He got the dark shades on. Big boy, man. Looked like he just fucking paroled out of San Quentin. This Vata pulls up and all the dogs start barking, you know, he's getting at him like, Charlie, bro, why are you guys, because a lot of this, in this institution, a lot of bulldogs still kicked it with Norteños. They identify themselves as perros, pero they were cool with Northerners, you know, and Sureños, um, whatever they felt like doing on that particular day. And uh, this Vata was pushing the movement, Charlie, man, we need to get off on these Norteños and all this. And we were hearing about this and he was on Carson Hall 
And so we're like, okay, so okay, we're going to get this big motherfucker, right? So I seen him one day, and he was walking with this Vato Blinky from Fresno. And I was like, I tell Big Smiles, you ready, homie? You get him, I get Blinks. I've already beat Blinks up like 10 times anyway. So it's like, okay, hey, 11. You know what I mean? Just do it. And um, and that's the true Blinky. You know it if you see it. Um, It never panned out, right? The Vato's wiggled. They did their thing. We did ours. And so the homeboy ends up going to court. Big Smiles goes to court. And I remember he's at court. I'm missing him. I'm like, damn, I can't wait till Big Smiley comes back. When he comes back, they don't put him on our unit. They put him over there on Carson with this fucking better. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be on a cracking. I don't hear nothing, right? No alarms, no placas running. So I'm like, what's going on here, right? I start getting nervous, right? One day I'm walking to school, right? It's me and a little homeboy, Shorty. We're just mobbing, right? <laughs> Doing our thing, you know? Hey, Norte, eternity, generations of United North. Man, we think we're bad, right? And we're mobbing, and this about the smiley is walking with this big old bulldog. And I'm like, and I walk up to him. I'm like, what's up, big smiles? And he keeps looking forward. Now his hair's all super slick back. He has lentils on like this, Vato. They look like twins, huh? You know what I mean? Like Danny DeVito, he fucking Arnold, right? Mobbing. You know what I mean? Uh, bow, wow, wow, yippee, oh, yeah. Bow, wow, wow, yippee, oh. They're doing their thing. And I'm like, what's up, man? And he was like, hey, I'm a dog, homes. And I was like, and my heart just dropped because I was like, damn, another one. I've went through this before. Where homeboys that I righteously had a lot of love for, I felt like they turned their back on me, you know? For no other reason than to go with their people, but at the same time, he'd be him being from Fresno, that's righteously what he chose to do, you know, I just was like, damn, bro, and I was like, no, no, come back, Luke, come back to the dark side, he was like, sorry, Gun Kenobi, right, I can't, and the little homeboy shorty was mobbing, he was like, fuck it, north that we are, eh, it's orderly Yoda, right, he was getting his push on, and we just pushed, man, I never conversated with the Vato Smiley again, it hurt my heart, anyways, about that time is when the XIV or Fametto thing kind of ceased. And that's because the pedal started to want to wiggle. And so we had to de -de 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 -bum -bum, wiggle with them. You feel me? And hit them with the tiger one time. And it went back and forth, man. No one won. No one lost, man. It was just fucking frivolous fighting. But it happened and it was fun at that time. And none of it counts for anything. Um, but I just wanted to talk about the City Vida Famero mix, you know, because a lot of people always question me about it. Hey, I heard this before, Gun. Did this happen? What happened over here? So I, yeah, I don't fucking know. So I, 48 laws of power, read it. I thought you'll get educated more than I could give you the, the game. But what I can tell you is, yes, it's true. It did happen. It's something that happened. A lot of authors from San Juan, Fresno know about it because it seemed like it stemmed from them. I can't sit here and tell you the exact day. On, on 1993, on October 4th, I don't know if it happened the exact particular day and hour, but I know it was cracking while I was there and I participated in it lightweight, just kicking it with the monks, the homeboys, but was never for it. I was never for division within the group faction and I never will be, you know. I'm for unity of everybody, man, whether it be on a gang tip or a non-gang tip, man. I believe everyone is stronger united. That's just me. Anyways, I hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. I hope that you move fast with a purpose. Remember, at the end of the day, that's fucking called hustling in a menudo style. Sass, get your issue on. You already know what it is. If you haven't tapped into the membership, tap in. We're knocking it out on the membership. Exclusive pictures, exclusive videos. You're getting sneak peeks. We're doing it in that fashion. We're going to start doing raffles where I'm giving away a lot of fucking things that I've never talked about yet. Shh. You know what I mean? I'm going to be giving away to the members. It's worth it, man. Believe me, it's a good time. I'm going to start doing member lives, fucking with the hand through one time for their mind, where we can really talk about it. You feel me? Um, remember, at the end of the day, it's all about uniting the raza, north, south, even the bow, bow, wow, 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 doing their thing. You know what I mean? Getting their bow, wow, wow on. You already know what it is. The gun, bang, bang. Like and subscribe if you're feeling me. If you're not, order it. Like anyways. Or put a thumb down. Fuck it. I don't care.